Hi everyone, I'm the director for Common Knowledge Trust, as you can see in the bottom third, and that's our logo. Whoops, that way. <laughs> I'm learning how to use eCam for Macintoshes, and I'm actually, frankly, really delighted. So let me just switch the overlays, and I'm going to talk to you today about the Birthing Better Childbirth Preparation online courses in a specific topic which is about fear in childbirth. So let me do this as well, because this is so neat. Look at, there you go, fear of birth. Okay, I want to tell you a little bit about myself now that I've gotten less shy about being online. I d developed these skills, the Birthing Better skills, in the early 1970s in the United States with hundreds of fathers and mothers. In other words, we developed them together. I'm not a midwife, I'm not a doula, I'm not a childbirth educator. In fact, I've never gone up to anyone in 45 years and said to them, Hi, how was your birth? I've never gone up to anyone and said, Hi, what do you eat? Or do you work? Or do you homeschool? Did you breastfeed or bottle feed? That wasn't my interest. My interests really are environmental and also traditional skills. I've always been fascinated with what we did as human beings before the modern world. What were the healthcare systems? How do we make fires without matches? So none of the birthing better skills were developed in traditional communities. I've spent a large part of my adult life living and working in traditional communities just as a human being to learn those skills. And of course we talk about childbirth. And so therefore I've learned a lot about how we as human beings have dealt with issues like fear around childbirth when there is no medical care. And it's really important for us to really debunk the myth about fear in childbirth. Now, when did this idea of don't be afraid of birth really start? My first child was born in 1970. And it's not something that we actually, my generation of women and men actually heard. Most of us in the United States were taking Lamaze classes or the Bradley method. And those were techniques that worked for some very well and didn't work for others. And then along the line, I realized that there had been another obstetrician, along with Lamaze and Bradley, called Grantley Dick Reed, who wrote a book called Childbirth Without Fear. Now, these three really dedicated male obstetricians could see in the 50s and 60s, and really post-World War II, that childbirth was becoming more standardized within the medical system. Now, there were reasons for that, and the two reasons were to try to prevent problems because problems existed. I now live in New Zealand, and in the 1920s, New Zealand had the highest maternal death rate from postnatal sepsis. And the other reason the medical profession developed was the phrase, women suffered in childbirth. If you haven't ever heard that, then... I certainly heard it a lot. Now, why is that? It wasn't that there were, were problems. It's that women didn't cope well with the natural occurring pain of contractions. And anybody who's had a baby knows that if the contractions start reasonably, that's fine. And then they get more intense, and they get longer and stronger. And then if they get really, really intense, they can be really overwhelming. So... When I started to hear about fear in childbirth and saying, don't be afraid, and what was coupled with that is women have always given birth. Cats and cows aren't taught to birth. Women don't need to be taught to birth. So those two things in my mind, in working in traditional communities, not around childbirth, I did not work with childbirth, but I talked and I taught a lot of these skills there. We've, I found out several things. Every traditional community has its own health system based on their religious beliefs, their cultural beliefs, what's available in their geography. Every culture has a very, very sophisticated health system. Very sophisticated because they had to take care of themselves. They were very sophisticated in making clothes. They were very sophisticated in making tools. They were very sophisticated at finding food. I mean, just think about it. Cassava is poisonous. You had to learn several steps to make it something that was safe to eat. So traditional people 
we're very sophisticated. We as human beings, when there was no modern world, we were very sophisticated. So when we look back and we see massive civilizations like the Egyptian civilization, we can go back into the Bushmen. They still had sophisticated health systems. And those health systems had a huge focus on pregnancy, birth, and newborns, and postpartum women, and babies up until the age of five. Up until the Second World War, up until immunizations and antibiotics, 20 to 30 percent worldwide of all children died before the age of five. This is just a fact. Immunizations and antibiotics have permitted us to not lose our children. They grow up to be adults. And this is a huge part of the population explosion because people are having less and less children. So more and more children are living to adult age. So it's really important for you to understand that we as human beings, because we are all one human being, every traditional culture, that means pre-modern medicine, focused on pregnancy, birth, the postpartum, newborn period, and children up to five. Because they were fearful that something would happen during those periods. Those periods were considered to be highly delicate, sensitive periods in which you could have a problem that could lead to death. Every human being has built into our cells anxiety around pregnancy, birth, and newborns. And yet in the 1950s, the message we started to be given, and it's being given more and more, is don't be afraid of birth. Now, let me really be incredibly clear to you with this. It's the wrong message. We should be anxious and afraid. And there's a reason why. And I learned this. It wasn't something that I developed. It's because I saw it and I talked about it in many cultures. When we live without the modern world and we feel afraid as human beings, it heightens our awareness. Fear isn't something to be afraid of. It is a gift that heightens our awareness. So what do we do when we're afraid, when our awareness is heightened? Well, we learn to ask questions. So the first question to ask, and I've simplified it and I've modernized it because it makes sense to modern people this way. If you're anxious about pregnancy, the coming birth, your children, your own health, the weather, the world, politics, whatever you have anxiety about, this is a skill for you. Ask yourself the simple question. Is my fear, when I see that situation, is that going to lead to death or major injury in the next five minutes? Just ask that question. Is it a yes? Well, act on it. Get help. <laughs> Try to resolve it. That makes common sense. If not, then ask this question. If my anxiety or fear, if this issue isn't going to be dead or seriously injured in five minutes. Is it going to be dead or seriously injured in 12 hours? If the answer is yes, get help. It makes common sense. So if it isn't going to be dead in five minutes or injured or in 12 hours or injured, then ask, is there going to be a problem in three days? You don't know. It's called observation. And that observation permits us to discern between, I've got to act now, I've got to probably act now, 12 hours, or I need to observe. And within that three day, 72 hours, either you're going to need to act, or the situation is going to begin to resolve itself. And the anxiety is going to go away. When we cripple fear, we cripple its gift. We can't determine the difference between high need to act now, medium but high need, 12 hours, or let's observe. So birthing better families, we nodded this out. 
We never had any issue with any of us feeling anxious about the birth. We heightened our awareness and we asked that question. Is my anxiety about my pregnancy or my birth or my baby or my children or anything, is it going to be dead in five minutes or seriously injured? Act. 12 hours? Act. Three days? Time to observe. And that calms you down. So it has been a huge mistake to tell women not to be afraid of pregnancy or birth or any of it. Because what happens when you suppress this gift and don't grow it, don't know how to ask questions, when you have a newborn, you're scared of everything. Everything looks like it's an emergency. And what I've observed over 45 years of working with tens and thousands of families who have had that fear suppressed is that every time the baby moves, particularly for the first time, it's what's the matter? What's the matter? Usually nothing's the matter. But we haven't taught each other as women to women how to really use fear as a gift. And I want to add one more thing. And that is about fear in birth itself and the negative voice. We don't always have a fear as a negative voice in birth. It's more a negative voice in birth. When I gave birth to my last child, I don't particularly like labor. I don't know. You know, I have very intense ones. And every time a contraction starts, my internal voice tends to go F, 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 F. That's it. Not very sophisticated. But because I had skills, while my voice was going like that, I could stay open. I could soften around the pelvic clock. I could be aware of every way that I inhaled and every way I exhaled. I could see myself doing the birth because I had very sophisticated skills and I just let my negative voice yabber on. So we want to spread the word globally. We need to grow skilled mothers and fathers for every birth. Your birth's important to you, just as my births were important to me. You didn't care how I had my baby. Really, be frank about it. You may not even care how your friends gave birth, other than you, you'll listen to their stories. You may care more closely that your sister or brother's birth was such and such, because they can impact your intimate relationships. But primarily, you care about your birth. And that's important for you to understand. As women to women, we must really teach each other real things, not spread myths. And there are a bunch of myths that I'm going to talk about because we need to grow realistically skilled mothers and fathers. You're becoming a mother, you're becoming a father, and going through the transition activity of birthing your baby spits you out the other end to being a mother and being a father. And Birthing Better Families really want to help you do that through our online courses. So we do have a 50% discount in the month of December 2017. So we have five courses, and we'd love you to get one for yourself or give one as a gift to someone you love who's pregnant. So bye-bye for now. See ya.